The whole school was stirred up into a commotion, students jumping here and there, trying to see what is happening. Others were hanging from windows and balconies of the classrooms upstairs. Everyone was struggling to see this unimaginable feat, a fourth-year secondary school student challenging the principal of the school. Right at the center, there I was, standing with the principal, my left hand holding his cane, which he tried to flog me with, and my right hand firmly grabbing his belt, in response to him grabbing me by my own belt too. I was shouting, Sir, you have no right to flog or intimidate me. Brianna is my girlfriend. I will not let her go. You should be ashamed of yourself. My words sent shock waves of excitement among the students gathered all around. They chanted synchronous cheers of encouragement for their fellow student who was going head to head with the highest authority of the school. The intense fear and panic in my heart at that moment was overshadowed by the courage those chants gave me. I thought to myself, there's no way I'm letting my beautiful girl go to this old grumpy professor. Well, how did we get here, you might be wondering. Who is Brianna? And how did she get me to do all of this? It's quite shocking, but I'm going to quickly share it with you. But before, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next stories. I met Brianna in the second week of school in the level 5 class when I went to spend time with my mates. I was repeating the fourth year and my mates were now one class ahead of me. She was transferred from another school to ours. Yeah, back then I didn't quite like school, found it to be boring, redundant, with very limited room for creativity. I spent most of my time daydreaming and creating things with my hands. Despite the fact that I was one year behind her, we quickly bonded and became very close friends. But it turns out that the principal, 63-year-old Professor Morris, had an eye on the new girl too. Actually, it seemed he had personally facilitated her transfer for the plans he had in mind. One afternoon during the compulsory prep study time for examination classes, level 5 and 7, instead of going home, I decided to stay back and read so I could spend some more time with Brianna. Professor Morris surprised us, holding hands while reading, and took advantage to accuse us of making out on campus. But the interesting thing was that he gave a convocation letter for my parents only. My dad is naturally stubborn, so when I explained the situation to him, he told me he doesn't have time for such nonsense. If I want to get dismissed from school this time, that was my business. Clearly conscious of his lies and bias, the grumpy old Professor Morris didn't react when my parents didn't show up. Rather, what he did was invite me to his office one day after school to beg me to set him up with my close friend Brianna. I didn't know whether to be angry or disgusted at the request. But I denied without a lot of respect to his regard. He threatened me to stop seeing her and that he was going to get her one way or another. I am the principal of this school, he said, and none of you will advance without my say-so. Everything was going alright after that. I didn't pay much attention to what the old man said. I had no interest in the school to begin with. However, on this fateful Friday, things were going to turn around. It was break time and as usual, a small group of us close boys gathered and were discussing about girls. One of our friends was interested in this girl but was too shy to ask her out. I can be quite shy as an introvert but when it comes to such things, especially when it's for a friend and not myself, I get hyped and can talk to any girl. So to help our friend, I was designated to play the middleman for him. As I was moving towards a group of girls to deliver my friend's romantic note, that's when I saw Brianna standing with Prof as we nicknamed the principal and he seemed to be talking sternly at her while she just stood there bending her head and face to the ground in fear. I quickly changed course when I noticed she was walking back towards the girls and the Prof was just standing there looking at her. We had actually heard bizarre stories about Prof, how he had been a predator to girls at the university before he was made principal of our secondary school. Rumors had it that he was doing all he could to continue his diabolic career here in school. They were just rumors until three days before this fateful Friday when Brianna confided in me that Prof was threatening to fail her or worse if she did not give in to his advances. 
Needless to say, I was furious as a clogged volcano. It's one thing to hear something as disgusting as that in the past, and it's another thing to witness it live. I held her, trying to get her to look up to my face, as I shook her by the shoulders to encourage her that nothing can be done against her and she had nothing to fear. It was surely at that moment that Prov realized that I was responsible for removing the bad seed of fear he was planting in his next victim and approached me for a flogging. I looked over my shoulder and there I saw this grumpy old man lifting a cane about to whip me when I reached for its tip and grabbed it with my left hand. As we struggled, he held me by my trousers and that's when I took hold of his belt too. A large commotion broke out at the school square as students witnessed this befitting feat of mine. Students chanted encouragements to my name. Others struggled to see what was going on. I shouted, Sir, you have no right to flock or intimidate me. Brianna is my girlfriend. I will not let her go. You should be ashamed of yourself. As I held on that cane not knowing if this was my last day in this school or not. Things later got calm after other teachers and authorities intervened. I was quick to narrate everything between Prof and Brianna, and though many of these teachers had heard the rumors, but were too intimidated to take action, my bravery that afternoon sparked the momentum that led to a prop into Professor Morris's activities. So two weeks later, with a pile of evidence against him, Prof had no choice but to shamefully resign. I would never forget the cheers and admiration I received from my comrades on that day. End of story. To you watching this, don't be silent about harassment in the academic milieu irrespective of the level. Speak out today and make sure action is taken by competent authorities. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss the next inspiring story. Please share your thoughts about my story in the comments below. Until the next story, remain inspired.